The Swedish school inspectorate on Thursday ordered two grade schools to close after authorities said the private foundation running them had links to violent Islamic movements. The two Al-Zahar schools in Örebro taught students up to year six, and one of them also had a daycare. But the inspectorate and the Swedish security service say children at the schools were exposed to radicalization and that a board member traveled to Syria and joined a terrorist organization there. Anders Gulberg is a lawyer with the inspectorate. The school inspection thinks that it's very serious that those who are responsible for a school activity... He tells Swedish Radio in Örebro that the agency views the situation as a serious one when school officials have links to violent extremism. He adds that children should never be exposed to radicalization and anti-democratic ideals. In a press release, the school inspectorate said it found, quote, serious shortcomings with the school's administrators and management and said they were, quote, unsuitable for conducting school activities. The school must close by June 15th and its students will have to go elsewhere for their education, but administrators can appeal the decision. The inspectorate's job is to scrutinize schools and assess applications from private companies or foundations that want to operate independent but publicly funded schools. Blueberry says school closings happen rarely. Since 2011, the state agency has shut down about 30 of them and only a handful of them for links to radical and violent forms of Islam. In its own story, Swedish television says it reached out to the school's administration for comment but received no reply on Thursday. For Radio Sweden, I'm Frank Radosevich. It's been nearly a year since the Islamic State terrorist organization lost its last enclave held in eastern Syria. But as Swedish Radio News reports, the extremist environment that helped recruit some of its members remains active in western Sweden. According to Sapo, the Swedish security service, Islamic radicalization is still happening in certain foundations, schools, associations, or companies. The vast majority of people who traveled from Sweden to join IS came from northeast Gothenburg. There, Andreas Wetterberg coordinates public safety for social services in the suburb of Angered. Miljöerna finns ju kvar. Det är bara att man det blir inte lika tydligt längre för man lockar inte med kalifatet eller man. He says the environment that radicalized people to join the Islamic State is still around, but not as apparent as it once was. Wetterberg tells Swedish Radio there are other anti-democratic forces operating in the area, which can cause problems in these poor neighborhoods to remain. Kan befästa problematiken i de här förorsområdena. Northeastern Gothenburg is home to several so-called especially vulnerable areas, all in close proximity of each other. They are areas with high crime and poverty rates, which can be prone to extremism. The problems in the areas can also cause some to turn to religion, something Alia Hassan, a mother in Angered, has seen before. Vad ska de ta vägen? De vill inte gå hem, kanske finns problem. Ja, men det bästa sättet vi går till moské. Where are they supposed to go? They may not want to go home. There may be problems there. So people go to the mosque, Hassan says. And there they hear about religion and get tempted by paradise. And they get help with what they need, like money, housing, or marriage. That's how they get pulled in. Others in Angered have also seen groups try to undermine the work of public authorities and replace their power with their own. Lisa Pedersen is the head of public safety in Angered. Det finns krafter som vill försvaga det demokratiska systemet. There are forces that want to weaken the democratic system, she says, because they know they won't get any kind of power there, but they will outside of it. They say, come to us for help and support, and don't go to social services. Or borrow money from us, don't go to a bank. And this way they regain a kind of power. Lisa Petersen speaking to Swedish radio's Karina Holmberg. And for Radio Sweden, I'm Frank Rodosevich. The security police, SAPO, warns children at Nya Kastet School in the city of Gävle may be at risk of being radicalized and recruited to extremist groups. Anders Gullberg, investigator at the Swedish Schools Inspectorate, comments. Uppgifterna är, är, är såklart allvarliga och, och skolinspektionen behöver utreda de uppgifterna noggrant. We find this information from the security police very worrying indeed, Gullberg says, and adds that the school's inspectorate will thoroughly investigate Nya Kastet school.
The news about the school comes at the end of a year during which crime has been a much debated topic in Swedish society. Politicians are taking a more hardline stance on the issue, not least when it comes to extremism. It's not the first time the city of Jävla has been on the news in this context. In April this year, an imam from the city, Abu Rad, was taken into custody by the migration agency, which was preparing to deport the man. This was in response to the security police calling the imam a critical threat to the safety of the nation. The imam was later released again, however, as the Migration Court of Appeal found his personal safety could be at risk were he to be deported back to his home country, Iraq. Now, the security police has warned the same imam has wielded a significant influence over the Nya Kastet school in Yavle. The school, which is publicly financed but privately owned, has been under fire since its founding one and a half years ago, including for misleading information in its financial report and for not doing enough to safeguard students' well-being and safety. In a report to the school's inspectorate, the security police warns students at the school risk being radicalized and recruited to extremist groups. It points to the imam's influence, the fact that Nya Kastet's owner appears to have wanted to employ the imam, and the fact that extremist networks with links to Islamic State have held meetings at the school. Earlier, the school's inspector closed down a similarly criticized school in Gothenburg, whose previous owner was also seen as a security risk and had links to Nya Kastet's school. Anders Gurbay talks about possible measures the school's inspectorate may take. Rent hypothetiskt så skulle ju det såklart kunna hända, men det är alldeles för tidigt. Closing Nya Kastet school could be an option, the school inspectorate says, but it is much too early to discuss that possibility. A decision is expected in the coming months. For Radio Sweden, I'm Eva Korén. Two years ago, the government ordered the Swedish Prison and Probation Service to strengthen its work against radicalization and violent extremism among prisoners in Sweden. Niklas Bellström, you are the Deputy Security Director at the Prison Service. How big a problem is this in the Swedish prisons? At the moment, the actual numbers of radicalized inmates in Swedish prisons are fairly low, but we are calculating the risk that the numbers will increase. I saw a number of of 20 people. How have you come to that conclusion? This is a result of intelligence estimations that the number is less than 20 of radicalized inmates who are trying to recruit or radicalize other inmates. So what can you do about someone who is in prison and maybe have reasons to be angry with society or upset uh, with society. How can you address uh, uh, radicalization in an individual in prison? First of all, we can address the security risk, which means that we assess the risk on on the individual level. And we use risk assessment from security perspective to place inmates correctly. We have big possibilities to place inmates in smaller groups of inmates, which means we can use our intelligence and security information to create as good circumstances as possible to prevent radicalization of other inmates. When it comes to handling the inmates, we have treatments, roughly the same treatments as we have for all other kinds of inmates, which is also suited for each inmate's personal need and risk. What do you see as the biggest challenges or or problems in working with this? Maybe the biggest problem right now would be the problem which is caused by returning foreign fighters, returning to Sweden from conflict zones abroad. These persons might have capacity to commit serious terrorist crimes and might also have mental health issues, which we need to deal with. It's a prioritized group of inmates, but the numbers of returning foreign fighters are extremely low at the moment. We see the problem as a potential problem in the future, and that's why we're focusing on the problem now to prevent this from happening. Overall, you seem to give a picture that the problem is not so big yet. Well, the problem is big. We take it seriously, but the current numbers of radicalized offenders are, uh, the number is low. At the moment, we see it's increasing and we estimate that the increase will continue, which makes it already now a huge problem if we should be able to prevent it in the future. So the problem is big for us because we want to prevent it. Okay, Niklas Spelström, Deputy Security Director at the Swedish Prison and Probation Service. Thank you very much for talking to Radio Sweden. Thank you.
The city of Malmö has been getting more tips about radicalization efforts since a 23-year-old former resident was arrested in Belgium, suspected of playing a key role in the March attacks in Brussels and in Paris last year. Now Malmö is working with the police and security service CEPO on best ways to handle the tips about individuals who might be running recruiting efforts. Jonas Holt, head of the unit for safety and security for Malmö City, told Swedish Radio's reporter that the tips have become more concrete. Ja, då kunde det vara ganska uh, ospecificerat. He says that before the information could be unspecific, that there were efforts to recruit for the Islamic State, and asked by the reporter how concrete their info is now, Hult answers, the information entails individuals and names. Det handlar om personer och namn. Mama's work against radicalization came under fire in April when the 23-year-old Rosengård native was arrested. He's suspected of being the second person in surveillance pictures that show the man who blew himself up in the Merbik subway station in March. The man left Rosengård in 2014, and it's suspected he was recruited to join the Islamic State. And since his arrest, more stories have surfaced about recruitment efforts in Malmö City. Swedish Radio's reporter spoke to a young man who believes he was approached by recruiters in 2014. He and some friends were sitting after playing soccer in Rosengård. They were approached by men with beards and the dress typical of the fundamentalist Salafist movement. The young man says, we were sitting and discussing things and they said, have you thought about getting to paradise in an easy way? Doing everything God wants you to, things like that. So we wondered, in what way can you do that? And they said, if you would travel abroad and fight. They didn't say it in so many words, but they did mean travel abroad and fight. 